it's now around three months since your article was first published. What's the response been like? I understand that this is one of the first times that you've been interviewed for an English-speaking audience. For the, uh, what you call the mainstream media, it has been dead silence except for two interviews I've done in Danish television, uh, and uh, which has taken off on the internet to an extent that I had not anticipated. But on a an official, organized level, it's a roaring silence, I must say. Just going back a bit, how did what first piqued your interest in 9-11? In how did you first come to examine the rubble, and what did you expect to find? It goes back about two and a half years, I think, when I accidentally saw Building 7. And to those who do not know this, we should make it absolutely straight that there were two airliners but there were three skyscrapers. Most people associate World Trade Center with the Twin Towers. But World Trade Center was a center. There were seven buildings. But no, and the towers have number one and number two. Now number three, number four, number five and number six were relatively small buildings from nine to twenty-two stories. But building seven was a huge building, close to two hundred meters high, forty-seven stories, with, with a, a footprint of the level of a small soccer field. And it came down twenty minutes after five in the afternoon. This was seven hours after the North Tower collapsed. And I, I saw this accidentally, and I said, what is this? This is World Trade Center, what? And I had to see it again, because I, as most people, I didn't know about Building 7. And it is going down completely symmetrically in 6.5 seconds. It is going down, it is zoop. And as a scientist, you're trained to watch your environment in an analytical fashion you always think now how does this happen how does this happen and this i just couldn't understand i cope with why should this building come down which i've never heard about before in itself i think this is should raise some aid eyebrows actually why haven't I heard about building 7 before and then it's coming down like this with no apparent reason so i had to push the button again and again and it took me weeks actually to digest this and I think it, this is common to most persons to realize what you have seen but once you have realized this there is no way back so you can either speak out or you can live in shame and from that on I got more and more interested and I found uh, that the evidence for controlled demolition is overwhelming the evidence for thermite is also first I told you that the thermite reaction produced molten iron. Now molten iron was pouring out of one of the towers. Molten iron was in pools of molten iron under in the rubble after after 9/11 uh, for weeks and months. The surface temperature was 735 degrees after three days of heavy showers. It took them three months to put out the fire. It was declared officially extinguished on December the 20th. Now this is kind of fire. <laughs> and, and the point is that the thermite kept on reacting. This was the bitches brew of thermite chemistry for three months. Very sophisticated. Very complicated. It's a masterpiece in demolition. And who, who would be capable of producing such a masterpiece of demolition? It is not compatible with the official conspiracy theory, the one with Osama bin Laden and the 19 hijackers. So I'm an anti-conspiracy theorist. I'm against the official conspiracy theory. But it's up for a criminal. We must have a criminal investigation to find out. This was a crime, and it has never been investigated as a crime. You're the first team to have examined the rubble and the first team to have picked this up. Why do you think that is? Technically, the, dim the collapses were investigated by the National Institute of Standards and Technology. So they should have looked into the dust. And uh, they have been encouraged many times to look for remains of explosives, to look for remains of thermite. And actually, there is some... Uh, actually, the... When there is a fire in the United States, which 
is suspicious or which is violent or which is unexpected. According to some regulation, you should look for thermite. It is in, because it is, it is, you can use it for arson and if you want to burn your house, this is the way to do it. You put in a submit reaction and you go on vacation and you can trigger it with your cell phone on long distance if you wish. So this is routine for, for FBI to look for remains of thermite. This, they do very frequently actually, but they didn't do it this time. I mean, obviously you're a, a, a real scientist if you like, so it's understandable that you, you don't want to be associated with conspiracy theorists and don't like that kind of term. Um, what would you say to people who do lump you in that same category? I, then I must repeat, I mean, who, who are being fooled here because the official conspiracy theory, yeah, people call me strange things and conspiracy theory is, theorists is, is not meant kindly, but, um, but who are being fooled here when we are being presented with an official conspiracy theory without any proofs? without a criminal investigation, with nobody being uh, charged with this, and nobody is wanted, Osama bin Laden is not wanted by FBI for this? I mean, shouldn't there be some few questions to ask here? So, I will turn the question back and say, uh, who are the fools?